Hey, it's Sharon here from Content Sparks, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use the done for you emails that we provide at Content Sparks. And in our main big Blaze packages, there are some emails that are designed to go with those packages, those programs. But in this video, I'm going to show you mainly how you can use the ones that are standalone. And in the example here, they are a stand, they're 10 emails in a standalone series about content marketing. So the first thing you're going to do is open up the emails and take a look at what's in them. And we give them to you in two formats in this particular uh, package. There's ones in DocX, so you could open them in Word or other software like that, or the TXT, the unformatted version. And for emails, I find it's easiest to use edit the text version that has no formatting because when you paste that into your autoresponder, it won't get all messed up, whatever formatting's there. So in this case, as I said, there's 10 and you can just use your preview if you're using Windows, that little preview pane to see what's in each rather than opening each. So the first one is about knowing your audience. And as I said, these are on content marketing. They're meant to work together as well in a series. So where to find ideas? What do you think? So sh ideas about sharing your opinion, getting ideas from competitors, how to beat content boredom. So as I said, these all kind of go in an order so that they're easy to add to your autoresponder or add on to another automation. So read through them, see what's there so you can decide how you're going to use them. And the first thing you want to do is decide on your goal for the emails. Are you going to promote something that's related to content marketing? Or are you going to use it to nurture relationships with your current either leads or customers? So decide on that and then decide where you're going to use them. So for example, you could use them in an automation, like a new or existing one. So let me hop over to my uh, autoresponder. This is my, I use Active Campaign. So this is just a view of some things that I either have scheduled or have sent just broadcast emails that go out at a certain time. But I also have a number of automations as well. And those are ones that either follow a product or a freebie, things like that. And just to show you an example here, I'll show you from one of our main freebies. Let's see if I can find it um, here. So let's go into this. This is our content planning template freebie. So you can see that I have a bunch of emails already scheduled to go out, but I could add onto that. So think about how you want to use it first and then go back to that, uh, to those emails and start editing them. So I'm going to open up one. Let's open up this know your audience one. And you'll first go in and edit the subject line if you want, or leave it the same. And then this first section here where it says first name tag, write a personal introduction, add a transition that you need to edit. So depending on your autoresponder platform, you'd use whatever that first name tag is. Every system's a little different. So I'll just worry about that when we get into actually putting it into the autoresponder so the, uh, because I can't remember the tag offhand. So you'd write your little personal introduction here. For example, I always put in right over here, I say it's Sharon here from Content Spark. So, so for this one, I'd probably just leave that but then you need a transition from previous email in the series. And we say we're relevant. So if you are continuing as part of a broadcast series or an automation, make sure you decide where, which one's coming before this and add some sort of transitions. And if you're just starting, if you're adding this on as part of a freebie, again, if you had a previous email where you said download this here, you would want to add in some transition like, uh, in the past, previous email, I sent you a link to blah, blah, blah. So here I might just add it on to some other series like uh, that automated freebie I showed you. So let me just type something in there. And here I wrote it in advance. 
so you don't have to listen to me typing. So I said in previous emails, I talked a lot about the importance of content marketing and how you can use our brandable content. In the next few, I'll share with you some best practices for getting the best results possible from your content marketing. So, um, or I could make it proven practices, something like that. And then you go into the text and see if there's anything you want to change. So it goes when getting started, the first thing is to identify your market. Uh, you know, you could add a little formatting when we get into the actual autoresponder editor. So read through, I'm not going to change anything here, but you might want to want to read through and and change some stuff. For instance, if you're working with service providers, you might change a good place to start is instead of customers, say clients, right? What common characteristics they have. If you have a social media following, you can check your profiles, blah, blah, blah. Okay. I'm not going to read it all to you, but here at the end now you want to put in a call to action. So we've put in kind of a placeholder where it says, if you'd like to learn more about, and then say it's about, content marketing. So I would put that in or maybe about content marketing uh, planning, you know, something like that. Click on the link below and then you'd put in whatever that link is. So for example, maybe I want to share a blog post. I would add the link here and then we can add some other language there. So for instance, here's a link to a blog post we did on a roundup of, about personalized content marketing. And then you could maybe add some other final words, uh, like let me know if you have any questions. And whatever your typical sign off is. And optionally, you could add an additional call to action at the end because a lot of people scroll down and only see the PS, but I'm going to leave that blank. So I've edited the email. The next thing you want to do is copy and paste it into your autoresponder. So first I am going to just copy this text so that I have it ready. And I'm going to, I just did a control C and now I'm going to hop over to my autoresponder. And there are, as I said, there's two options. Primarily one is to schedule it as a broadcast where it goes at, out at a specific time. So if you need content for your newsletter, you'd set that up or there's adding it onto an automation or creating a new automation where they automatically are sent out to a certain list. So in the broadcast, you would just start a new campaign. However, it looks in your particular email autoresponder. So I'm going to say new campaign. I put in a name for it. So then you go next. You'll pick whatever list you're going to send it to or however your platform works. And then you would go and pick whatever template or I can pick a past campaign to use as a template. Um, let's just pick one. I'm going to pick from a past campaign because I often use them over and over. And I'll just pick a previous one that I just did. Use this design. I'm going to put in a subject line. I put in the one from uh, that was given in the email and we can always edit that. I'm going to continue. And now the old contents there because I used a previous email. So I'm just going to end up deleting all of that and adding in the new text. So I'm just going to delete that and just add in the new text. So I don't need this first name tag because I'm using the one from before. And you can see it just pasted it right in. You might have to fix some formatting. And then you go through and do whatever. I like to put in a little bit of formatting, as I said, because it just makes it easier to read when people do have that HTML put in there. So I might make that actual bullets. And I have some other things I like to do. It, it's really your personal choice here on how you format your emails. So for instance, I keep it as 500 wide so that there's no artificial wrapping, but I might also put in some bold in there. So I might pull out one sentence and make that bold, or I might highlight another thing that's important point like, uh, so the first, when it gets getting started, the first thing is to identify your target market. So I might bold that. So go through and figure out 
what makes the most sense for you. You have it all done. If you're using a previous email template, you'll need to delete anything that you don't need there. So I'm, this happened to have a lot, so I'm deleting a lot. And the nice thing about using a previous email is you have some of the stuff, the elements in there. And then I like to hyperlink this. So for instance, this is a, a blog post. I like to make it a hyperlink link. So I just typed in a click here and then I make that a hyperlink with that blog post. And you could add an image in, so the preview of the blog post, whatever you typically do, and just get rid of anything that's that doesn't belong. Okay, and then you want to read through all of it. Make sure you have your subject line, uh, an active campaign. They also give you the option for some pre-header text, so that's the preview that people see in their email platform. So I have, do you know your audience? And then I could put in here's where to start so that people know what it's about. And then you just want to send a test so that you can try it out in your email. So I'm not going to do that, but you do want to go look at your email, test it, make sure links are working. And then this is again a scheduled one. So you'd need to go in to your scheduler and decide when you want to send it. All right. And then you can just do the same with the next ones, maybe send them weekly or every few days, but that's how you would do it with a broadcast. With an automation, what you would do is go into whatever that automation is. So say you're adding it to an existing one, you'd go in and if it makes sense to add it in the middle, great. Otherwise go to the end. Uh, in this one, it's our content planning template. So, the last email I might need to look at and see what it was about in order to know what transition to put in. So if I go back to the email that I edited, if it's part of an automation, I might have to change this first one. In the previous emails, I talked a lot about the importance of content marketing and how you can use our brandable content. So actually this one would follow through nicely as it is. So I'd go in and just rather than ending the automation at the end, this is an automated follow-up, as I said, I would just add another email. So I waited for two days and I would go and send email and I'd want to create a new email, the email name, so, so that you can find it in your automation, create that. And the rest of the steps are pretty much the same. You could even use the one that I just did use this design. So it's going to look the same. It just didn't check the list because it's going in an automation. So I already pasted that in, but you'd go through the same steps to make it work. And then you go to next and make sure everything's set. Maybe add your pre header text, all the same stuff. The only difference is it's actually in that automation which I'm going to have to take out because otherwise anyone who's in that automation right now is going to see it. And then you'd add that, uh, this stuff, the conditions and workflow to wait a couple days, say, so specified time, maybe you want to wait, uh, five days until the next one. And then you'd go in and add another email. So the next one in the series. So hopefully that all makes sense to you. I'm going to quickly delete this one so that I don't have people getting something that they shouldn't. And that is everything, I believe. And all you would do now is go back and either add each one to your automation and do that editing again. And I'll go back and show you those again. And you'll go back and do the editing on all the others and go through the same process, either add them to your broadcast emails in a series or add them to an automation. So give that a try. As I said, these are the ones that are standalone, all about content marketing, but the same concept would apply to the ones that are included in our packages. You just already have the guidance of including them with that product if you want or anything on content marketing. All right, let me know if you have any questions at all. Take care.